Are you using OBS? Yep. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, so the bin pops open with a door shape. And at that point, you realize that the fin is made of wood. The fish you are on is made of wood. This entire thing is a ship. A very tiny ship. What's its name? It's you Spot. don't know that yet. I named it Spot. That is not the name of the ship. Yes, it is. And a gnome walks out of the door Hello, and friend. seems... Quite surprised to see two people standing on top of his ship. He looks around, mm. and he looks at Pedwin, and he kind of smiles a little. Then he looks over at Morris. Big Mo. Big Mo. Big Mo. He has to kind of crane his neck upwards, because he's quite small, and Big Mo is quite large. He chuckles to himself and says... Well, of all the great big things I was expecting to come over the side of that ship, you were not one of them. Well, come on, mm. not leaving you out here. And he invites both of you to follow him down inside the fin. Nifty. Ramped in here. All right. Uh, you can ask him that shortly. Let me get your tokens in here. Oh, you have this? You have a room for this too? Maybe. Did you see HPG's backstory in your campaign, Joe? Yeah. Why would he not have all this planned? <laughs> so I hope you guys don't expect me to uh, be anywhere near as this, because I'm just going to keep going with the. Uh... Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I don't, I don't anticipate you doing anything in particular. Ooh. So as you descend the staircase that is connected to the fin, you come into what is actually quite a comfortable room. It's well lit. It's wood everywhere that you can see. The same kind of timber that's used in the construction of the exterior of the ship. There are tables strewn about with various. Charts, papers, objects. Some of them you recognize, some of them you don't. There's a string of beds towards the back. And most remarkable is in the center, there is a large dais with a lot of stone structures surrounding it. And it is bursting with magical energy. You can feel it, Joe. It is just radiating off of that. So, magic fish ship? I say to him. He chuckles a little bit, and he says, well, mm, basically, I made it. Neat. Thanks. I call it the tide fin. But uh, don't step on that. And he indicates the dais in the center. Well then, over here. He shows you around some of the ship, indicating uh, what you've never seen before are what appear to be windows in the side of a fish that you could not see before. There are also beds. He says you can rest here. But uh, I wouldn't get too comfortable. We're not staying down for too long. You following the ship up there? Yeah. Strangely enough, someone seems to left, have left us a trail. <laughs> and the tide fin sure is hungry. Haven't fed her in uh, ooh, about a week or so. Upon hearing that, the entire ship shudders a little bit. And a very large, very soggy piece of bread plops into the center of the ship. Which then quickly 
melts into the floor and vanishes. I'm going to jump up on a chair. You jump up on a chair. I sit down on the floor. This gnome, who you haven't asked the name to, goes up to one of the very large windows, which you can only surmise is an eye, and is looking out at the ship that it is following as the tide fin continues to gobble up breadcrumbs, and the ship shudders a little bit every time it happens. So I'm going to ask him why he's following the ship. Why am I following it? Well, that's easy. I got a friend on board, and there's something that uh, I need back. Uh, your half-orc friend? Oh, you've met Holg! Yep. Yep, that's him. We were trying to free him. Oh. We got uh, thrown off. Free him? He was unfree? He was uh, in the brig. He was all Ugh. chained up. He thinks he's so sneaky. I told him there's nowhere to hide on a ship that small. It's pretty big to sneak. Yeah, that's what I tell him. But he's been doing it for years. Seems to be at least decent at it. He fiddles with a few things in and around some of the shelves and chests, and then moves over to the chair and plops himself down. So what were you doing on there? Oh, just headed to a library. Leaving. A library? Ah, you do have the smell of magic about you. Pull, pull, pull out the, my hand and do a fl flame and then, and then uh, get rid of it. Ah, very nice. And, uh, you, big guy, where are you from? Not here. Oh, I'd have guessed that much. Nobody's from here, not unless I say so. So, uh, you better start talking real fast. Uh, he was, he was, I'm, gonna say to, I'm gonna say to him, he was the one trying to free your friend. Oh, is that so? Suppose I yeah. owe you a debt of gratitude, then. At least uh, he does. Well, it didn't work out. They stopped me before I could do anything significant. He's gonna hop off his chair and waddle over to you and extend a hand which is reaching up to about your thigh. What's he trying to do with his hand? <laughs> He's trying to shake your hand. <laughs> I shake his hand. Well, you're gonna have to bend over to do so, but you can. I bend over and shake his hand. <laughs> He gives you a quick look up and down. He says, well, can't smell anything magical on you. Looks like it's just the one. Right. So, uh, not to pry or anything, but... Nope, nothing to what do with were you two... Nope. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, what are you two doing out in the middle of the ocean? I jumped. He jumped. I was kind of uh, flung off. Flung? <laughs> he chuckles a bit. What, somebody pick you up by your ears and throw you off? More of a magical fling. Oh. There's a magic user on that ship, huh? That must be the one who has my... And he stops his sentence there. Your... Thing. He turns back to I'm Big Mo and says, My business! Mm -hmm. so I hope it's not your great axe, because I kind of promised that to Mo. No, no, I ain't interested in that. But, uh, I'm willing to bet the fellow that's got that axe has got what I'm looking for, too. You see, I, uh, he's got a tool of mine, something that I need. Using it to uh, get me where I need to go. Where are you going? I'm Let's going to Cinderin. Cinderin? Yep. What's uh, what's in Cinderin? Cinderin. Well, that there is an island that shouldn't be. I hear all sorts of strange things going on there. Weirdest weather you've ever seen. 
Good question. That's what I'm aiming to find out. Can't get there without what I need, though. I am intrigued. I am very intrigued. I don't say anything. Wait, did you say that out loud? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad to see I caught your interest. You know what, maybe you guys can help me a little bit. That, uh, that feller with the axe. Tell me a little bit more about him. He's a jerk. <laughs> oh, anybody that flings a gnome into the ocean is going to be a jerk in my book. So, uh, what if I fling you back? I, I reckon we could do something about him. It's not on his person, is it? Actually, that doesn't matter, does it? Oh, I'm... I, um... I reckon we could, uh, do something about him. Alrighty. Well, you need to know what you're looking for. Uh, just, just, uh, hang, hang behind the ship. Oh no, if I'm sending more people in there, I want to know exactly what's going on. How many people do you have? Well, you've only met the one. I hope Hulk's alright. He does look down for a moment and, uh, and kind of shifts in his seat. Then he hops up excitedly. He's like, alright, so... He runs over to one of the chests, fiddles around with a few things, Tosses a couple of objects over his shoulder. Clearly doesn't particularly care about how well-kept the ship is. And then ho hobbles back over and hops up on the bench across from Bedwin. Not going to see much from over there, big guy. Sits back down and unfurls a piece of paper. And on this is... Pedwin, you can recognize a lot of differing arcane symbols. Most of them you can't understand, but some of them seem to imply, or some of them seem to bear similarity to detect magic spells that you've seen, mm -hmm. and uh, similar incantations. And uh, he kind of clears his throat, and clearly he likes talking about his own work. I like listening. And so he says, this and points to a circular object in the center, is a compass. It's my compass, and I made it, and I want it back. Well, supposing I didn't make it, but I know the man who did. Who made it? Oh, that was my mentor. But, uh, he's gone now. Sorry to hear that. Eh, yeah, me too. But, I warned him. What? About what happens when you play with fire. Showing sure off, sooner or later you get burned. I, I flick, I flick my flame in my hand. Is it? I've never been, I've never been burned, much. He cocks one eyebrow and says, "Not yet." This here compass ain't no normal compass. This here is a magic compass. What is this, Django Unchained? Or I don't accent, even know what you mean by that. Your accent changed a little, and it sounded like something. So, oh, I'm I'm trying to maintain the same accent, but I don't. <laughs> it's entertaining. Don't worry about it. He points to several of the uh, the intricacies of the drawing. He says these are conductors. What they do is they attune themselves to whoever is holding the compass. It doesn't show you north. I don't know, any compass can do that. My compass shows you what you really want to find. I knew those guys on the ship sounded like people from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I saw this coming from a mile away, HPG. What the hell are you talking about? Your accents from the people on the ship sounded like the ones from the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. I haven't seen Pirates of the Caribbean in a real long time. Oh. <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just... I guess. <laughs> I'm channeling Johnny Depp. Um, where the hell was I? 
He was uh, talking, he said the compass points you to what you want. Ah, yes. And that's why I want it back. Me? I want to find Cinderin. Well, the ship's still headed to Cinderin, I think. Oh, is that so? Well, maybe I don't need that compass in such a hurry, then. We can always try to get it back. Oh, that's what I'm counting on. After all, they don't seem very reliable on that ship, as far as their information goes. Mm. As if they weren't telling the truth about where we were heading. I'm gonna, mm. uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Big Mo for uh, the cannon so I can finish tinkering with it. I thought you still had it. Oh, I guess I, then I still have it. I'm gonna finish tinkering with it. Yeah. No, oh, what you got there? He's gonna shuffle over the side of the table and try and get a closer look at what you're doing. Just Clearly, he's a very curious character. It's the present for my friend who jumped out after me. Uh huh. What's it do? <laughs> just a single shot cannon. Just a little simple thing. I can work up in a few minutes. All right. I have a much, much more, a much more uh, explosive things. I'm, I'm used to making. He turns towards you and cocks an eyebrow. He's like, you're not carrying much of that now, are you? No, no. Not much. All right, then. Oh, my mistake. He's going to gather up the paper and roll it back up and tuck it back into the chest over here. So it's at this stand. it's at this point that he or it's at this point that the the ship itself starts to shudder and speed up very quickly and you all kind of feel the pull of the movement of the ship and he hops up and says what the and runs over to one of the windows oh that was not what i wanted to do okay there we go and as he's looking at it, he's looking out at the ship, and he can see what appear to be several of these large, dark, lizard-like creatures that are crawling up the side of the ship. He says, oh, that doesn't look good. Hey, uh, you two ready to be heading back pretty soon? I grunt and nod. Assuming, uh, does it seem like he's trying to get us to get to the ship quicker, or he wants us to stay behind and defend? Uh, it seems like now that he's seen these things assaulting the ship, he is much more concerned about getting his compass back soon. Okay. If then I grunt and right nod too. in my head. Okay, Steve nods. What did you say, Joe? He probably wants to save his friend, too. You, uh, taking a look at him, you can see that his concern is, is very genuine. It's not just about an object. That's so. He says, all right, then. Everybody grab on. And he hops onto the dais in the center. Oh, baby. Do we grab onto the dais? No, no, no. You, you don't want to step on the dais. So he, oh. he, he's very excited, or he's, he's, it's very heartwarming that he he finds uh, Pedwin so interested in what he's doing. It's like, well, just hang on, need a little room here. And then he grabs two of the stone pillars that are on either side of him, and the entire dais starts to glow and pulse with like a bright pink energy. And the ship itself then really kicks into gear and starts churning through the water. You can see through the windows that it's kicking up quite a wake as it goes. I do sort of a, uh, I grab, grab onto the side of it and do sort of a uh, being blown away by the wind thing. Are you grabbing onto the dais? Yeah. All right, your, uh, your hands are going to, they start to tense up a little bit as current flows into them. And it, it doesn't hurt, but you can feel that there's a lot of power running through this thing. 
Uh, Big Big Mo apparently is not phased. I guess he's just very, very steady on his feet. But uh, he seems to be enjoying this new little turn of events. He, uh, he says out loud as, as you start to close the distance between the ship and yourselves, All right now, when you get back up there, whoever that fellow is with the axe, I'm willing to bet he's got what I need. You've seen what the compass looks like. Which I'm going to break character for a moment. It looks very much like a regular compass that just... The needle is always spinning. We've seen his compass. Yeah, he showed you the, the diagram page. of it. No, we've seen, we've seen, um, Burn, Bernie, Burn, Burnley with the compass. Uh, you have not, no. Okay. He is basing that deduction on what you've told him. And I'll go a little further to say that it has to be, it's not just anyone that can use it. It has to be someone that has a very strong desire. Like, there has to be something clear that he wants. And from what you've seen, there's nobody else quite on the ship that has a very clear set idea of what it is they want. Aside from him. Some Pirates of the Caribbean. What is with all these Pirates of the Caribbean references? It's the exact thing from Pirates of the Caribbean. How? Do you not remember? There, okay, in the first one, it was about the sh- it was about the the ship, the Black Pearl, wasn't it? Yeah, but he had a compass that pointed to what he desired most. He did. Yeah. Yeah, that was like half the the point of some of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Oh, was yeah. people trying to obtain his compass to get things they wanted. Oh, alright, well. I suppose that idea was not that original anyway. <laughs> uh, so you don't need it, original, you need interesting, and this is definitely interesting. Oh, good. Uh, okay, so at this point, <laughs> I'm going to, to end this section, because it's there's, you're going to get a little bit more dialogue, and then you're going to get sent back to the ship. Actually, I suppose it's fine that it happened this way because, uh, I mean, there was, if everyone else was here, they were just going to have to not listen while I talked about all this stuff. Wait, so are we done for now? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we are going to be done this particular section for now. Okay. And otherwise, striking a very manly pose with which he can simply uh, deal with the inertia of the ship. <laughs> and it starts to churn forward in the water a little bit. You can see through the eyes just the, uh, the motion of water. And as you look through the eyes of the ship you can see not only the bottom of the weaver off in the distance but you can also make out other smaller shapes in the water beside it and boff is he really looks like he's having a good time because i mean this is kind of his creation and he's getting to pilot it so he's not exactly making a beeline he's kind of meandering a little bit and doing some swirls you get the feeling he's showing off just a touch and he's got a huge grin on his face underneath that enormous mustache of his. <laughs> As he starts to get a little bit closer to the ship, it all of a sudden lurches to a stop in a very short span of time. And even Boff seems taken a little bit by surprise. And you hear a little... Wah, 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 As the ship kind of <laughs> slowly... Or the ship loses momentum rather quickly. And uh, Boff looks confused for a moment. 
and then turns to look at one of the eyes, and you can hear him kind of muttering to himself. He's like, hmm. And he moves up, and he looks out one of one of the eyes of the ship. And you see him kind of, hmm. And his mustache kind of shifts side to side, under, side to side underneath his bulbous nose as he makes his thinking face. He concentrates for a moment and dips into his pocket with one hand and pulls out a, a very nicely lustered pearl. And he claps it between both hands and kind of rubs them together a little bit and mutters a small chant. And then his hands press together flat as if there's no longer anything between them. And this kind of orange pulse seeps out from between his fingers. And he moves and he, he actually touches the glass right in front of him. And that orange wave that was around his hands kind of spreads out through the glass of the eye. And then he takes a step back. And you hear him go, oh. And he takes another step back and goes, uh-huh. And he turns to Pedwin. And he says, you need something. He turns to Big Mo and says, you need to get upstairs. Let's go. What do I need? Oh, when this window closes. Oh, I moved Sivo, my mistake. Uh, you ask him that and he rummages around inside a chest. And he pops out with a health potion. Yeah, something. And he spins around and hands it to you and he says, This! He actually hands you two small health potions. Um, okay, I'm going to take a brief aside. Do any, Does anyone know where in the handbook it says what the values of health potions are? Uh, I can try Dungeon searching. Master's Guide. Let me pull that up. Okay, I got the DM's guide. I have I have a comment that shows it. Uh, b -b 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 Potions of Healing is on page 188. That is 2d4 plus 2. Wait, I thought... I guess I have a different DM guide than you. Uh, page one, 188. Oh, mine only has 63 pages. It would be the Player's Handbook. Oh, no, oh Player's Dungeon Handbook. Master's guide. Oh, oh, it's it's also in the player's handbook on page one fifty three. Uh huh. One fifty three potion of healing two d four plus two. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the dungeon master's guide has it in the items section. All right. Well, unfortunately, I don't uh, I don't have access to that because I'm going to find the PDF somewhere. Um, but he hands he hands two to you and says. Take one of these and get the hell upstairs. And he moves over to Big Mo and, and hands him one as well. You too! Uh, I'm going to show you where the stairs are. I have a potion of healing. You have a potion of healing. The stairs are right there. It's a, a small ladder that actually comes down from the, the roof of the ship where it kind of extends up into the fin that you guys walked down. Bum, 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 ba -dum, ba. I no, climb up the I, stairs. He gave me two, right? Yes, he gave you two. For one to have for now, and then one to pocket. Okay. Uh, inventory. Uh, before he steps up on the dais again, he kind of he bends down a little bit and uh, and whispers to the surface, "I see it, Tink." And Tink. then steps up on the dais again. Tinkerbell. He said, yeah, that's what I call it. Short for Tinker? Uh, he just likes the word Tink. Gnomes are funny creatures that like nicknames for things. Short for Tinker or short for Bell? <laughs> he just calls it Tink. You have no I, idea why at the time. I guess I'll go up the stairs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Tink talk? Steve-O is going to go up the stairs. Up the stairs. I and disappeared. I, 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 once I'm almost all the way up the stairs, I yell back down, how are you going to get us up there? Uh, to which you hear the response, you will find out. Grab a hold of the tail. Uh, oh. I, grab hold, I grab hold of uh, Big Mo, who's grabbing hold of the tail. Like, do we go to the end of the tail? You got to go to the end of the tail. I wish I had prepped free fall. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, we're going to be on a boat. We're not going to fall anywhere. <laughs> oh, wait, fuck. There was, there was supposed to be something I did before this. Uh, okay. 
I'm going to shift you guys back to the interior because you, let's assume you have not left just yet. Okay. Sorry about this. Messed up the order a little bit. Bum, bum, ba, dum. All right, I'm going to bring you guys back in for a moment. Did you tell Color we were playing? Uh, I did. Okay. At least I really hope I did. I'm going to try casting my magic missile and see if I did it right. Okay. Yeah, I did it right. Alrighty. Uh, so, hang on. So, he hasn't told you to go upstairs just yet. He's kind of got you at the ready. Uh, and so, he once again grabs a hold of the dais and says, Sit down or something. And the ship takes a big, like, 90-degree turn to the left. It it turns way faster than any ship like the Weaver ever could. Like, this thing moves basically on a dime. The the ship, and you can, looking at the walls, you actually see it kind of flex and change shape just a little bit to accommodate for the really rapid shift in momentum. And it churns towards the bottom of the Weaver. And you can see him rubbing his ear and uh, just kind of saying out seemingly to nothing, Hello? Hello? Where are you, you stupid lummox? And then he kind of steps up, he uh, flinches in surprise and says, oh, there, okay. Um, so you really should duck. And uh, I've got some reinforcements on the way. Okay. And you can see he's in a little bit of a panic. He, he's definitely te pressed for time. And he turns to you two and says, now's a good time. Now we go up. And now you guys go up. I disappeared. I'm yep. magic. Poof. I don't, I don't even know invisibility yet. <laughs> okay, so now you guys have come up there. And you are grabbing hold of the tail. Whee! Uh, now, fortunately the timing worked out quite well on this, because he... He steered the ship up and just breached the surface, so you are now just to the port side of the Weaver. And from where you are, you can see more creatures climbing up the side of the ship, including a very large one. Dun, dun, dun. And you're not entirely certain what Boff has planned, but he's been pretty kind to you so far. <laughs> so you're inclined to go along with the plan, and you cling on to the tail, as much as you, uh, as much strength and ha as your arms and hands will Don't give you. Don't tell me what to think. <laughs> okay, that is our little <laughs> prologue done. So okay. I'm going to try and get everybody else in here. So we're going to pause temporarily. Awesome. Figure out how to get a hold of collar and spider. Well, we're still waiting on Spider, because uh, I don't think he's home from work yet. Oh. So I put the password on, um, mainly to discourage people just dropping in. Yeah. Um, but anyone that, you know, you think is, is going to, like, warmly receive what we're doing here, then feel free to let them know. So, like... Uh, so, blah, who the, Ned, fuck, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so if Ned wants to spectate again, he can. It's just, he's got to, um, like, obviously you can give him the password, but somebody like Artie, um, you know, last time he was in, he just kind of blurted some stuff out every so often, it kind of took me out of it, so uh, if he comes, you know, and asks, Ooh. don't give him the password. Art? Archie the medic? Oh. Art. Okay. Okay, and uh, for the time being, I'm going to add you guys to the player's flag, so you're going to shift view again. DSS Kidney. So one thing I didn't realize about uh, magic missiles that it hits no matter what. Oh yeah, it always hits? It always hits. That's cool. There's no, there's no saving throw, there's no attack roll, it just hits. So it's literally the best, op best damage option for a low level. Yep, <laughs> at least it's consistent damage. It's what, it'd be 3d4? It's, uh... 3d4 plus 1 for each, or 1d4 plus 1 for each, right? 1d4 plus 1, 
so 3d4 plus 3. Yeah, Total. that's not bad. And you can ch put put them on multiple targets. Oh, yeah, I was uh, I was looking at some of these spells yesterday when I was sorting out uh, Boff. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. I think I elected not to give him lightning bolt. Who? Boff. Did, we, did we get flung by the tail? Um, you don't know that yet. <laughs> but yes. You don't know that. But yes. You don't know anything. <laughs> so no free willy for us. It, it jumps over the ship and carefully places us on it with its tail. The tide fin is not powerful enough to make it <laughs> over the weaver. If, the if SS it kidney. Did, even if it was at full size, it would probably just crash onto the weaver, not clear it completely. That sounds just as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think uh the pilot's gonna be that big a fan of that idea. Hey JD. Call him by his real name, Danny Sexbang. He's not Abedin. in the game yet, I don't have to I'm not calling him Danny. When he gets in here I'll call him Danny. I've been going back and forth on uh, divination and evocation schools. What's the link? Uh, the link? Let me get that. Well, if you go to the main page, you can access it. Yeah, if you just log in, it should show you what campaign you were part of. I don't know the site. Roll20.net. Yep. And these sign-ins in the top right. All right, so I'll say this now, just so you guys have the maximum amount of time for it. Um, I'm going to want everyone to, like, I'm periodically going to want, like, to pull from details that are relevant to your character's backstory. So if you want to go ahead and just, like, add a little bit of depth to it, like, I'm not asking you to, like, to give me some epic 400-line thing. Too late. Too late. <laughs> hey, if you did, that's just fine. But I just want, like some significant event or characters or like a little bit of stuff for me to work with so that I can try and incorporate it a little bit. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything big, just something. You said we need to do a backstory? Uh, well, you, you have a bit of backstory. That's what you put in your bios. It's just I want something that will be more than just uh, we campsite have a conversation. Bio? Like a significant character or something that you want. Yes, like your character's motivations or like drives. What? Why did they get on the ship? You know, like they okay, they bought a ticket. They're trying to get away from the fog, but I mean, there may have been other ships. There may have been other ways. You 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 got on the ship because you were planning on going somewhere and you believed the ship was going somewhere. So there was a a drive behind it. Okay. Have you looked at mine? <laughs> uh, no, not yet. I'm going to right now. So it's not. It's. it's uh, I was. I was. I was wrong, Steve. It's not quite as long as uh, Astra's. As oh, nice. Like There's so much more stuff here. Characters minus like 4,500. <laughs> really? I got 6,000 characters of stuff. Yep, yep. Wow. I guess I got a little carried away. So 
So the Rimbaldi stuff, I couldn't decide between the two, so I just put them both up there. Okay.